morning, good afternoon, good evening, friends. I'm Kevin here with a story from the life extract of the great Albert Einstein. The chapter this is in the 11th class standard and the book Snapshot. With this chapter, I'll actually be going ahead and covering the whole book Snapshot, my friends. If you want to know more about the chapter or the book, you can actually view my previous explanations about the chapters. So, the last chapter from the book Snapshots, let's go on. It's a story about Albert Einstein, the great Sir Albert Einstein, during his school child, schoolhood programs. Albert Einstein was a fellow who was never actually interested in the matters of studies. Mark me studies, I'm not talking about subjects, I'm talking about studies. History, a subject that requires a lot of dates, a subject that requires a lot of remembrance and all sort of things was the worst for him. It, ha it is common with a few students of mine as well and a few of you as well. I do understand history being a subject of dates and events. According to Einstein, history is something that has to be remembered by dates and events. He denied and defied this thing so as to go ahead and turn pages and get the references since it's already mentioned. Now this debate of him with his history teacher actually infuriated the person and demanded him to be meeting the principal and other various teachers as well. Thus, the young Einstein later on was expelled from the school system not accepting the fact of the present uh, the educational scenario going on in the schools. He was sent to Z Munich, out from that school as well, spoke to his cousin, Elsa, who later became his wife, about the changes in the ed educational scenario that are going on. Einstein actually did not believe in the bookish knowledge. He believed in a student letting hone his ability by giving out his interests. There's an scrapped in the story where Einstein has a discussion with his maths teacher. And the teacher supports Einstein's decision to leave the school by saying him that he knew that he would not continue in the school much before than the date that they were having the conversation on. Einstein was taken aback because maths being his subject, the favorite ones, he lost his rudosity, atrocities, forwardness during the maths section. He actually was paying much more attention, was more attentive, polite, humble, used to reach the class five minutes prior during the maths session. Thus the math teacher of Albert Einstein knew his interest for mathematics and asked him to move ahead and continue his theoretical knowledge as well as prax in the mathematics section. The theory of relativity here, my friends, is the biggest work of Albert Einstein among various numerous patents and discoveries as well as events, inventions. Einstein actually believed in letting the students hone their talents rather than mugging up, throwing up the bookish knowledge that at times he felt was not relevant. The story is actually about him enduring his childhood, facing the wrongs in the vicinity of the slums where he used to live, facing the hardships, I'm sorry, about the education system the whole school, including the principal, expelling him from the school just because of applying his own logics and replying and debating with the teachers 
in spite of getting himself a lunatic record from the doctor his, as his friend Yuri, the best friend that he had, provided the thing, yet Einstein wasn't kept in the school. In fact, he was humiliated and expelled. Thus, this is a story about the person commenting on the education system. We can call it in the ancient times, we can call it now as well. We'll go through a few question and answers now and get the excerpt from the chapter that actually will go ahead and give you a brief about what Einstein had in his mind. The first question is what do you understand of Einstein's nature from his conversation with the history teacher, his mathematic teacher and the head teacher. Einstein's behavior seemed to be extremely atrocious, erratic with the history teacher who actually forced him to learn the dates, remember the events that were mentioned in the books. According to Einstein, it wasn't necessary to remember the dates and the events if they are already mentioned in the books somewhere. Einstein, being a person of logics, believed that things once done and noted down are to be kept down and not remembered for future references rather than mugging, up, mugging them up and remembering them. He actually felt giving out time to certain new inspirations, new ideas and new innovations rather than keeping the old stuff in your mind. He believed in jotting down the things, down the paper and keeping them for references. My friends, this is a very good habit that Mr. Albert Einstein had in him and that certainly implies on us as well, noting down. I personally had the chance to go ahead and note down, make notes while our teacher narrated the questions and explained the question and answers and covered the chapter in my childhood while I was into the education. I would suggest you to make a habit and hone this quality in your daily routine as well. With the conversation with the maths teacher, Einstein was a humble fellow. He felt that the mathematic teacher was the only person to believe in Einstein and to go ahead and put him, put his trust into him. The conversation with the headmaster was rather heated up because Einstein was humiliated and asked to leave the education system because he wasn't easily accepting the present scenario and or the education methodology adopted by the schools. The next question that I would suggest and read out is the school system often curbs individual talents. Let's discuss. Friends, this is a question that we can definitely go ahead and check out on our own. Rather, I would suggest you to gather certain excerpts on your routine school life and then go through them and write up an answer of your own. For me, the comment over here, to comment on the, school, the current education system, curbing the talents of the young kids is actually right. The schools today are effectively working on quantity rather than quality. The student-teacher ratio today isn't acceptable as the teacher isn't able to concentrate on every single child's personal growth. And above all, the focus or more the focuses right now are more on mesmerizing the dates the digits the data the knowledge rather than understanding them we force our kids our students to mug the things up to learn them by heart by repetitive analysis repetitive speaking rather than letting them understand the concepts involved in the education and the knowledge. Yes, the current scenario is actually curbing a kid's talent rather than letting them explore. For instance, let's say a kid interested in arts is asked to collect 
perfectly matching numbers in maths. Friends, a student of arts rather would be more inclined towards creative abilities, creative writing, poetic things, fine arts, rather than calculations, observations, instruction following. Thus, we need to hone the secrets of the child's mind in his early years to go ahead and answer this question. The third question is, how do you distinguish between information gathering and inside formation? Two different universes, information gathering and inside formation. Information gathering, as the word suggests, is collecting up the data, collecting up the knowledge, wherever it is, whether printed or find it on the net or find it in the books or writing it down. Whereas, inside formation is somebody's self-retrospective about a subject. The view that a person carries towards the subject is inside formation. For example, I would go ahead and give you a notion of Einstein himself. Einstein believed in solving the issues by calculations, by innovations, thus giving us theories of relativity, etc. Whereas, the information gathering was his history book that already had dates mentioned and noted for the references. According to him, history was something that has gone and has been noted. Fair enough. The personal instinct, or to be precise, the insight formation lies in one's mind. It does not require special attention. It does not require special needs or reads or knowledge or books. But it requires one's ability and will to define and seek the subject. Thus Einstein actually prolonged and gave his view during his early childhood at the school age. If you want to know something about or have any questions regarding this beautiful chapter, you can comment below or you can know something about us, just click the button about us or contact us personally. You can get the questionnaire, you can get the data online, you can get or request them in a pen drive as well. I'll be here to help you. So this was the chapter where I've gone ahead and concluded the book snapshots of class 11th. You can get various more chapters in my previous videos on request as well. Thank you very much. Signing off, Kevin Lopez.